West. We get so caught up with what's going on here, but actually, uh, from my experience, hip hop and R&B is huge overseas. So what has your response been like all over the world as you go about doing your thing? It's been great. I mean, I definitely feel like I educated America that there are black people. When you first came to my show, I was like, what? In Ireland. <laughs> Really? Yeah, you know, but it just shows me, though, that the love for music is, is very much alive. And it's universal, you know, because no matter where I go, whatever accent they come out with, whatever they look like, you know, they all, they all relate to music. And that's why we do what we do as artists, that we can touch as many people around the world with what we created, you know. It's a universal language. Morris, when you first heard Laura, what was it about her that made you decide to sign her and make her a part of Atlantic outside of all of the other artists that you had heard here and abroad? What made Laura stick out to you like, wow, this is the girl we got to have? Okay, well, first off, I don't sign anybody. Okay. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Um, you can say it, though. No, man, you didn't get me caught up on it. I it all. Hey, you I had, it, it's funny, I see pieces of Laura like flashing outside of her and our guy's office. And uh, I said, who is this? And I saw it sitting up there for a while. I'm like, okay, who is this and when is she coming out? So I, I went into Steve's office and I said, okay, give me a CD. Let me hear what it sounds like. So I heard it uh, and I love the uniqueness uh, about it. And um, I felt like it was something that we could get at, at our format. And um, so, my staff embraced it. Everybody loved it. Um, we l really love championing championing um, artists. Um, my staff. It's something I'm I'm really really passionate about. I'm really excited about because I want to make a difference. I don't want to just work the easy records. I don't want to just you know go after those records that you know everybody and every other label wishes they had that were huge hits. I want to make um, artists shine from start to finish. Um, Laura immediately, and I'm probably going to embarrass her, but it's okay. <laughs> um, she, she is that. You know, when you see her perform, I, 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 uh, everyone here should really go see her perform. I'm not just saying it because um, I'm, I'm, I'm working with Laura, but she is special on stage. She is the kind of special that you don't see very often and that we should see more of. Um, I've been in the industry now for about 25 years, and I've seen and, and worked with people from like Quincy Jones to Chaka Khan to wow. Michael Jackson, I mean, Luther Vandross, I mean, tons. So I know what real artists are like, and, and Laura is that. And um, the only thing missing is the exposure. So our job is to expose her, in, like I said, in, any, in every way possible. To sh until she's at the point where everybody knows who she is. I have no doubt that Laura's album is, if anyone listens to it, they'll find it absolutely amazing. So it's just a matter of time. We were in the same sort of space um, with T.I., with Trey songs. I remember when working Trey, it was, it was a huge battle because people just, they didn't think it was quite hip hop enough. It was, it was a number of things that, that worked against us, but um, we kept chipping away and chipping away until people saw that diamond that existed there with Trey, just as I know that they will see that with Laura. All you got to do is just get out there, see her performing, and you get it immediately. You know, I can listen, I'll tell you this too, just because I'm working a record don't mean I love it, okay? If I hear something and I don't like it, okay, I'm working it, but I'm putting it to the side. Laura's album, I put that in my car, I'll listen to nonstop. I'll put it in my, I'll play it in my office, and I'll listen to it nonstop. My daughter listens to it. She loves it. She knows who Laura wow. is. That's interesting. So every record that you pitch, you don't actually really... No, I, I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie. You know, some, it's, sometimes it can be no just name. a job. Right. I'm going to say, I want to know which artist did he come in and go like, well, look at you. on the side. I right. gave you some names, but, uh, well, but no, you know, right. I like working real artists, you know, and I, I feel like when you break artists, that's, you know, that's, that's the stripe on the shoulder, you know. I, work, I was fortunate enough to work Jay-Z's project this year, which most of you know came from Def Jam, uh, but it was our one opportunity to work with Jay. Uh, as, as great an album as it was, and we delivered two number one records for him, which were his first number one records, 
it's not a real badge of honor for me because I didn't break Jay. I have every intention of breaking Laura, and that's my badge of honor. Trey the same way, T.I. the same way. And Trey is doing his thing right now. Hey, I wanted to uh, ask Derek Brown, right now, uh, a lot of artists are submitting their music different ways, but as a programmer, uh, you know, the old school way of submitting your music is not you know, really going on anymore. So what are other ways that programmers are looking to get artists on the air besides just the regular submission process that we used to have for all these years? Uh, the internet has really taken things over. You know, I used to say, you know, I'm kind of old school. I want my stuff on a CD. You know what? I'm going to take it How am I, however I'm going to get it these days. Be the MP3. Could, you wouldn't believe the music that's jumping off from YouTube, people sending YouTube videos. Uh, Jermaine Dupree has a new artist called Dondria. I don't know if you've heard about her or heard the song in GCI, but uh, folks are just going crazy. And she started off of YouTube, and it just started growing vi virally. There are other artists like that as well, so you just never know where you're going to get that next hit from. And any programmer worth his or her salt, uh, they're not going to wait on a record label or anybody to bring a record to them. They're going to start digging to see where they might find that next hit, that next new artists that, that they can embrace. Uh, hey, Laura, I just wanted to ask you to uh, talk a little bit about the misconception as an artist out there. Um, you know, a lot of people think that it's all fun and games and it's all glamour. Uh, a lot of really good artists make it look so easy that when we see the finished product, we just like, wow, they just had fun all day. But talk about some of the things, the actual work that has to be done to, you know, stay on top as an artist out here. Like, what do you have to do really on a day-to-day -day basis to really keep yourself in the game? You know, and people tell you that, they try and warn you that, and um, you know, you just don't believe Like, what were some of the things that, like, people tried to warn you, and then once you didn't believe them, and then you found Promotion. out, it's like, whoa! Promotion. <laughs> Everyone was like, be prepared, and, uh, you know, we were doing two, two, three flights in one day for maybe four different radio stations. And, Performing at night time, and you're up at four in the morning, and you're not going to bed till one. Meet and greets, a lot of you know. Um, it, honestly, like probably two percent of what you do, you know, sometimes is music is actually singing and performing, and the other is, you know, a lot of physical work. And um, it, it's easy to get lost, you know, because performing to me is the one thing that keeps me focused and keeps me grounded. And if you're not getting to actually perform live and you've just got like three weeks of full promotion, you can get a little funny and you can get a little bit lost, you know, so... Um, you ever come out on stage like, hey, what's up, Cleveland, and you in Dallas? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I nearly did one time, but I, I make sure I don't do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, definitely, that's why you need to love music, because if, if you're after this for fame and the perks of, of this whole industry, you really are not going to last because it's not enough motivation to get you up at three o'clock in the morning or whatever you have to do. You have to really think about this is this is uh, for the joy of my art. This is because I want to do this because I believe in this, um, and and that really has to be your motivation. So despite all of the money, the fame, the trips, and all of that, you really have to love what that you comes do. way after. Like it, I really, and even if you sit there with a big check in your account, you're not gonna have time to spend it, because it doesn't, it doesn't, you know. That's somebody told me to work really hard when I was like 15 for 10 years, solid. But I'm getting yeah, my mama started. used to say that best: work hard now and play later, it's or either true. play now and work hard later. I remember that. I want to talk to, uh, talk to you about being a female in the art, uh, female artist in this industry. Uh, you know, a lot of misconceptions out there. Uh, females have to sometimes do some things that they may not be comfortable with just to stay on top. Have you experienced anything like that? Um, I have not. Not yet. I don't think not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, again, I think because I came into it so young. But I had written all my own songs, I had my own vision, I had probably too much attitude for a 15 year old girl. But uh, it did stand to me because people had no choice but to respect it and accept that that's who I was. 